in orbit. In this video, I want to give you a detailed look at the station. We're going to look at each module in the order that they were assembled. We'll look at the countries involved and the future plans for the station. So if you're ready, let's go build a space station. The International Space Station, or ISS, took many years to become a reality. In 1984, the United States announced a project called Space Station Freedom. Here's some drawings of what the original station might have looked like. It was never actually built in its original form. There were lots of redesigns, and its funding was almost completely cut by U.S. Congress. Then in 1993, after several other countries were brought on board, the name was officially changed to the International Space Station. Five years later, construction begins in space. I'll show you the complete construction process, but first, let's learn a little bit more about the station. This is the ISS as it looks today. It's mainly used to conduct science experiments that can only be done in space. There's usually six astronauts on board the station. They generally switch out about every six months so that no one spends too much time in space. The station is about the size of an American football field. It's located just outside the Earth's atmosphere. This is called low Earth orbit. It's not very high up considering that some satellites orbit way out here. The ISS only takes about 92 minutes to orbit the Earth. That's about 28,000 kilometers per hour. Over time, the ISS will slowly lose altitude. If nothing was done, the station would eventually burn up as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. To prevent this, the station must be periodically reboosted to stay in space. The main countries now participating are United States, Canada, Russia, Japan, and many countries from the European Space Agency. Let's get to know the main parts of the station. The integrated truss structure is kind of like the backbone of the station. It holds the solar arrays to generate electricity, radiator panels, these remove heat from the station, and other equipment and science experiments are also attached. This part down here contains the pressurized modules, which means the astronauts can live and work in here without a spacesuit. All of the Russian modules make up the Russian orbital segment. The other side is called the United States Orbital Segment. It's made up of modules from the United States, Europe, Japan, and Canada. The different pieces of the station, also called modules, were built in many locations around the globe. Each module was then launched into space by one of these three rockets. The American Space Shuttle, the Russian Proton Rocket, and the Russian Soyuz Rocket. Once in space, it's time to put it all together. This is definitely not your average LEGO set. Once construction started, the ISS took a little over a decade before it was considered complete. Each one of these lines represents the addition of a new module to the station. Let's go ahead and start at the very beginning. The first piece of the station is a Russian module called Zarya. It provides power from the solar arrays and also propulsion when there's a need to move the station. There's three docking ports in front and one in back. These will be used to connect to the next pieces of the station. The second module is American, and it's called Unity, or Node 1. It has six docking ports to connect to future modules. There's a special piece here to connect between the different docking mechanisms. This is called a Pressurized Mating Adapter, or PMA for short. Unity was launched with PMA 1 and PMA 2. This is the Zvezda Service Module. It provides life support systems and is considered the functional center of the Russian orbital segment. It also has three docking ports in front and one in back. Next is the Z1 truss. This holds equipment for the station. It's not part of the main truss, but it provided a temporary mounting place, as we'll see here in a moment. PMA3 was then added to the bottom side of Unity. It's always good to have an extra one of these around. The P6 truss was temporarily mounted to the top of the Z1 truss. This includes the first solar array wings. This provides much needed power to the growing station. Radiator panels were also installed to help remove excess heat from the station. At this point, there was enough functionality 